A simple ultimatum. Leave with your life and a meager reward, or risk it all for a chance at ungodly riches. For each trial you accept, the challenge grows. And we're back with another explosive arrow. A lot of people were worried that explosive arrow got a nerf, but in some ways it's going to be stronger than before. However, I will mention that the super end game version that I put like 100 to 200 divines in last league that some of you followed with tattoos and stuff, obviously tattoos are gone, so an end game version would be very changed than last league. That being said, Explosive Arrow is my favorite build guide to recommend to new players. There are obviously things that are a lot stronger at League Start, like Detonate Dead, maybe even Toxic Rain, but a lot of people don't like things like DD because it has a multi button ability. And if you like the playstyle that Explosive Arrow offers, it is such a solid powerhouse. It ended up being one of my main builds in the Total League, and I did everything with it. Every Uber, I farmed everything with it, and it was so smooth. It does not come without downsides, however. You have to place your totem, the totem has to attack, and then the arrows have to explode. So if you don't like that delayed playstyle, this build might not be for you, but it offers a large amount of damage, a very easy build with not that much to fuck up. Such a good boss killer. It is also incredibly tanky. If these builds help you have a great league start for Affliction, please consider subscribing. It does help the channel massively, and thank you so much. So early on for leveling, I recommend Spectral Throw. That is basically the tried, tested, and true, and it is a bit of a pain to level this build until level 28. However, Steel Skills have just gotten a big rework, so they might be completely fine. Definitely recommend trying out the new and reworked Steel Skills and seeing if they're good, because there won't be a leveling tree difference anyway. And the big change is at level 28 when we switch to Explosive Arrow. Now, it doesn't really matter whether you're using a short, a grove, or a thicket, because the only thing that increases between those is not just the dex requirement, but the physical damage that the bow deals. More important thing here is that they have a base attack speed of 1.5. That's why I mentioned that some people were messing up and using things like Harbinger bows, Decimation bows, or anything that's, well, not 1.5 attack speed. Another thing you can do for additional damage while leveling is since faster attacks and lesser multiple projectiles are both green, you can swap that out for bosses and that's usually what I do for leveling. Infernal Cry is not mandatory. I personally never use it because I don't feel like I need to because I always have enough damage. We are only using this for the Covered in Ash modifier which makes your enemies take more fire damage. But I do want to have it in there because if you feel like you're low on damage you can do that. And part of why I recommend Explosive Arrow is because we're gaining damage by leveling. So an attack based skill would normally level or scale its damage based on the weapon, but all we want is attack speed and gem level. So this is so incredibly strong because if you're feeling weak, you can hold control while entering an area and keep resetting the zone, leveling up once or twice. And you'll notice every time your Explosive Arrow levels up, you will see a big damage increase. So as normal, we're going to do our step by step version. However, there is a large amount of changes in Path of Building. So we are using a 323 version and we are going to have a POB for both 322 and 323, depending on when the update comes out, because there's no actual changes in the skill tree, um, at least not that affects this build. So we will have both POBs listed in the description down below, whether you have or have not updated yet and whether it has not come out yet. So either way, there should be something there that works. And uh, it is very, very straightforward because there's not a lot of changes here. So let's talk about what did change. So Explosive Arrow previously had skill effect duration and chance to ignite on the quality. Now this is not very important for Elementalist, but it is very important for Champion because it's part of how you get from 90% chance to ignite to 100 or rather 110. So this is the old quality and now it is going to be plus two additional arrows instead. So instead of stacking to 20, of max fuses it is going to go to 22. now this is actually a buff as long as we can hit the fuses now this relies entirely on attack speed and stuff like that and we'll explain that later how do we solve the ignite thing so there are a couple of ways to uh to solve this you can get chance to ignite on jewels and you can get a uh, chance to ignite on a helmet implicit however 
don't actually need either of those because you always have 90% chance to ignite anyway, which is more than enough for mapping because we do have a lot of damage. Um, so it's not a problem. And we're also using flammability on an Arcanist brand. And since we're doing that on everything that actually has tank anyway, it's going to be cursed by flammability, having a chance to ignite of 115%. So even if you don't do one of the steps where you get an actual 100%, it is not a big deal where your damage actually matters. And that is everything that has changed with this build. Other than obviously losing tattoos, etc., which affects every build, should be very exciting. There might also be transfigured gems that we can use for this build, but we don't know right now. So we're trying to just make league starters that are like a safe bet that doesn't really need anything new and interesting, and you can just play. And we are in the notes and stuff, gonna try to account for some of the things like the Wildwood Ascendancy and other things. I have done a everything explained for this build in the past. The way that works is this seven hour play along playthrough that you have on another monitor as you're playing. I explain everything that I'm doing, how to play, etc. for those that really want extra hand-holding. Ascendancies are included here. So if you hover over those, you can see which ascendancy points are taken when. So we do end up not really needing to ascend until we're able to do Cruel Lab. However, ascending Normal Lab might be interesting because of the Transfigured Gems. While I have this skill tree open, I do want to talk about some things that people can easily get wrong with the build and some things that are very important to know. And we did get... Some people getting this wrong last time that I didn't explain it clearly enough in the video. So first, let's explain precise technique. The way this works is as long as your accuracy rating in the game is higher than your life, actual numbers, it'll say accuracy, like 1,123, higher than your life amount, which maybe then might be around 800, then you're getting 40% more attack damage. So this is not your ignite. That's why we don't choose to go ignite early. We don't have like nodes like this particularly early. It is not as important. Um, and if you happen to find a quill rain, we can have increases in reduction to projectile speed also apply to damage with bows, which is particularly the hit portion. This does also not affect the ignite portion. So basically the TLDR early, we are hit based and later we are ignite based. So that's part of why Quill Rain is so strong early because you're getting up to 100% increased damage. I do want to explain Elemental Equilibrium too. This is a easy one to mess up. And on this, you can have percentage fire damage. That's completely fine. But you cannot have flat fire damage to attacks on any of your gear or your rings or your amulet. So the way this works is because EA kind of hits twice. As long as you have cold or lightning or both, you're always going to be proccing EE for more damage before the fire damage goes off and you're instantly hitting it again after. So you're basically getting 25 more damage for free. It's very strong for this build. You don't want to mess it up. You can also hover over your explosive arrow and make sure that the only thing where it says fire damage should be on the explosion. Another thing that is easy to mess up on this build, you cannot have pierce at all. That means no penetrating quiver, I believe it's called. But yeah, no pierce. It'll make the arrow go through the monster without exploding. And another thing is you only want to fire one, three, or five additional projectiles. You'll notice we do have less than multiple projectiles, which is really nice because we get more clear speed and a more area that we cover. However, if you're firing two or four arrows, the game kind of just aims around the monster. So you're just firing into the wall. It's a little bit unfortunate, but you do want to be careful. You get one, three, or five projectiles. Now, if we look later at the level 69 tree, very nice. There are a few things I want to explain here. Spiritual command, this gets asked about a lot. Like, why do we have minion attack speed crafted on the bow? And that is because increases and reductions to minion attack speed also affect you. And that means that this minion attack speed of 8% increased attack speed will just be the same as if you said 8% attack speed with bows. So really, really nice and is a great way for us to get all the minion attack speed or all the attack speed in general that we need. That is the most important thing on this build. Now, I did try to make that perfectly clear last time and I actually only had one person out of all the people asking for help with Explosive Arrow. There was only one or two people all of last league that had a bad bow. They were using things like a Decimation Bow, a Harbinger Bow with loads of damage listed on it. And it might be a little counterintuitive, but pretty much the only thing that matters on this build is having really high attack speed. Everything else is secondary. It can be a little bit hard to work out the damage because you might always just have set this to 20 or 22 stages and that won't really account for the type of weapon you're using, etc. So attack speed is king for this build. 
And the way that works is the more stages of fuses that are in your target, the more damage we do. We always want to make sure we have 22. And even having a little bit of an overkill is completely okay. Because remember, bosses do move and things like that. The final thing to explain here is elemental overload. And you cannot have that and precise technique at the same time. They cancel each other out. So make sure that when you're swapping off precise technique, you swap into elemental overload. I did see one person have both and then you just have no damage. If you're wondering how elemental overload like visually looks that it's active, it's like a crystal on your explosive arrow. It's pretty much always there when you're fighting. Uh, elemental equilibrium really doesn't have a visual component anymore. It's so hard to see. Now, people will also ask, how do we get the six totems? Now, you get one from Ancestral Bond. You get one extra from um, Panopticon down here, which we get later. And you get one from the Anoint at Watchtower. So that is how we get all six. Why do we see so many builds completely drop accuracy in the late game? Well, that's because once you've done your fourth lab, the Uber lab, you get worthy foe and enemies taunted by your attacks cannot evade. This is incredibly strong because we effectively do not care about accuracy. So even though your in-game will say you maybe only have a 40% chance to hit, you're pretty much instantly taunting with six totems and then you are no longer missing at all. Now, here in the end game, you can see that we have now switched to Ignite and you also around somewhere around like level 50, you kind of want to swap to Life Tap. And the thing that makes you want to or be able to swap is when you have enough regen. I think you need somewhere between 200 and 300 for it to actually not feel awful, but at least you can drop your mana flask and have an additional life flask to help with that loss of life. Running Vitality as well is not a bad idea either. I do that quite frequently. But if you swap too early, you'll notice that you're hitting your life potions in a large amount. But yeah, so we have Combustion, Ballista Totem, Life Tap, Elemental Damage with Attacks, Ignite Proliferation, and Empower. So the Empower here is not enabled. This is an option instead of Elemental Damage with Attacks. It is not worth using level 3. It is such a small increase, and it is still quite expensive usually. We do have very easy access to Empower now with the new... Um, with the new lab stuff, so it should not be a big deal anymore. However, once you go Awaken Gems, then uh, there's a lot of other options anyway, and we'll cover that shortly. So chests, this is really, really nice. You very often can get away with not even having a five link, and um, you just need to have a, a link for your bow. But yeah, here we have Frenzy, Life Tap, Blink, Arrow, Calling Strike, and Infernal Cry. So obviously the Infernal Cry does not need to be linked here, so a four link chest is more than enough. Here in our helmet, we have Determination, Grace, Skitterbots, and Malevolence. Now, what I usually recommend here is you can have them just like this in your helmet, but if you want to save a gem slot, what you can do is get a trail with Verici Research, and you get the, uh, instead of a green or a blue socket, you get a white socket, then you can swap between Grace and Malevolence. Let's talk a little about this. So it is actually very difficult to get 20 or 22 fuses without Malevolence. That's because it's more skill effect duration and that makes the fuses take a little bit longer before they explode and that does have a little bit more time to build up those fuses. So this is very important for a single target. So you'll notice anytime I do a difficult boss, so for my build that it was very min-maxed, I would only swap on Ubers like Maven, uh, Searing XR, etc. But... If you're going to fight anything big where you want more damage, you want to swap out your grace for malevolence. That's also because generally on Path of Exile, bosses aren't going to auto attack you to death. They're going to have spells, they're going to have huge slams and things like that. That If they hit you, you're probably not expecting to dodge them or maybe you can't dodge them at all. For Awakened Gems and things like that, one of the biggest things you can do on this build is you can remove Ignite Proliferation and you can get this implicit on a glove. Ignites you inflict spread to other enemies within the radius of 12. This is incredibly strong because if you look here at Awakened Burning... So what this does at level 5, which you actually only need to get it to level 4 because we're putting it in a plus 1 bow, will be plus 1 level of supported fire skill gems. So this is incredibly strong. Definitely want that. It is one of the most worth things you can buy for the build. And other things like Awakened Wed is pretty good as well. As for the Defiance banner, you never drop this. You just put it on for the armor innovation. So don't worry too much about that. So early on for leveling with Spectral Throw, you are just using any weapon with 
even elemental damage works early but physical damage generally will feel better and you just want life and resist on your gear it is very important to note that you can use your crafting bench to craft on white gear that means you're mostly looking out for your socket pressure and getting things like green 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 or you can't remember exactly i think it's green green red uh, and you're looking for those things and then just using to craft resist on your other gear. Now, here is a new thing that we've started using. This is useful level and unique. So you can look at all of these. All of these are good things. The best thing you could possibly have would be a cool rain. Nothing will beat that. A tabula is not super important for this build. A rain of splinters. This is great for the build to get it more clear, but I do want to make it extra clear. A lot of people think this will give you more damage. This is something you remove for bosses because it does have 35 reduced totem damage, which is bad. And the additional projectiles do not make us get more damage. It is simply just for clear. Whenever this is very expensive, don't buy it. Like I will pick up my own crimson jewels and chuck some mall orbs at them. And I would probably use one if I found one. I am sure as hell not paying five or ten divine orbs for this. That is because there's so many other builds like uh, artillery ballista and ice bear totem that actually gain damage from this and wants this, and that will drive the price up. And I think a lot of explosive arrow people thought it was very mandatory. A really cheap option that is usually very good is a dying sun and just dropping one of your utility flasks while mapping. This is so nice because you get no real downside and. Honestly, I picked one up for 30 chaos in trade league instead of like the eight divines that a Rainbow Splinter was. So I would recommend Dying Sun. In the early game, this is pretty much the best type of bow uh, you could get early. The most important stat here is that it is a short bow. I really want to drive that point home this time. The second most important thing is that it has attack speed. Even if it has like seven, ten, whatever, this is great. The better number, the better it is. Um, and then socketed level of bow gems. This is good as long as your explosive arrow is inside that bow. This is very important. And then you will craft minion attack speed as soon as you have access to spiritual command. Broadhead arrow quiver is obviously our best in slot quiver. And then you want lots of armor of evasion. Very good. And you see that we're mostly focusing on life resist elemental damage with attacks is great. And you can see that the gear is starting to increase improve here and increase and here you see that we don't have many implicits the most important one is the uh ignites on the um on the glove this one that is the number one thing you want other things is suppressed spell damage can be good on gloves you really do want 100 percent suppression it'll make a big difference even going from 90 to 100 is night and day on boots you can get plus max fire res you can also get ignite steel damage faster and this is very very big because we only have one ignite so as long as it doesn't expire before having dealt all its damage, it is just the same as 6% more damage. That is why we want a died in dawn. Remember that you can use attack or elemental catalysts and they are still in the game. They are now from ultimatum. You can use attack or elemental for another 7% damage. This belt is unbeatable. You actually don't want to use mage blood on this build because this belt is basically 42% more damage. Vermilion rings can be really good as long as you can resist cap without them. You just want to get a lot of life. A marble amulet is really good, um, but you can also use the dragonflight amulet. This is incredibly strong and might let you fit some more stuff, but a marble amulet, really nice because of the regen. However, simplex amulets might end up being really strong this league as well, but it might be a little bit tougher to craft. Body armor, we do want to have the 12% uh, fizz taken as fire and lightning. Ends up being a little bit more than just getting percentage life crafted. We don't have that much like uh, actual physical mitigation except for our armor. Here you can see on the helmet the chance to ignite and thumb ability curse effect. Now ashes of the stars will actually be really good. This is going to be putting us to 25 stages which is actually quite a lot more damage as long as we have the attack speed for it. So you normally want any of the other amulets unless you are able to get a crazy amount of attack speed. This will need you will really need a perfect bow with a 19 attack speed and um, you will have to have the harvest enchant. And there are other things you can get too, like synthesis implicits with additional attack speed and loads of things you can min-max on this build. And with a min-max build, this is a build I have taken every Uber out on. It was very comfortable. Um, when I did a poll with my chat on how many people thought I would die, I think even on my first Uber I was doing, only 4% voted I would die. So you know this is a build that is very solid and people believed in. Flasks, we're going to be using a granite, a quartz. Quartz is very important on every build just to give you phasing. Shade flask, a quicksilver, and a life flask. And you want either bubbling or seething. So that means it's off instant or fully instant. Now in the notes, we have detailed all the 323 changes, what has changed, what has improved, etc. 
So um, there are loads of things here to make sure you read if you're having any issues. Obviously, a lot of you might have already played EA a lot. Um, there's some speculation here on the Wildwood Ascendancy, like there could be really good things here. Um, and we could even end up getting chance to ignite from uh, the um, Socket Ascendancy. So that could be really, really cool as well. And yeah, here, here we have all the different options. Elementalist is very good, but it is very glass cannon and is really interesting because of the new tinctures. There is a um, all damage can ignite, which you still need chance to ignite with this. But now we can do similar to the Elementalist where you get Hyrie's Ire, Hyrie's, whatever the chest Hyrie is. Um, for, for cold damage and stuff. And you can end up doing a more glass cannon-y champion, still have a shit ton of damage, while you're still getting some of that nice champion tank from Fortify, etc. So, really cool choice for softcore. You have so much more wiggle room than we did before. Now, a lot of people are asking why we don't have, uh, why are we using short bow or grove bow instead of just a thicket bow? Because thicket bows are dropping everywhere, and even a grove bow can be really, really rare, and a short bow is incredibly rare. Now, this is entirely because of dexterity, and um, it can actually be a little tough in the game to get a dexterity. It will be easier than last thing now that we don't have tattoos, but short bow is also incredibly easier to color. So getting item level 86 short or robo is really hard. I normally do the Coward's Trial. If you do this and it starts at tier 16, you will almost guaranteed get one or two Grobos per run at item level 86 or above. And the only thing you get at item level 86 is up to 100% elemental damage with attack. So that's if you want to make a super endgame bow. And I do have a few videos on how I made those in the past. So now I want to explain a little bit how to do the duration calculation. So I'm going to use the end game tree and I've set the quality to zero because this is still the uh, old quality that has increased duration. So now the only thing that's increasing our duration is the malevolence and that puts us at 126. So we're going to have um, a skill effect duration of 1.287 seconds. And then this is um, how long it takes for the actual explosion to go off after it hits the target. Um, so that's the time it has to build up. We have uh, an attack speed at the moment of 2.65. This is only in the end game. We do have a further version that gets like 2.9 or something. And you can even further min-max that with attack speed on gloves, etc. We are multiplying this by 6 because we have 6 totems. And you're getting 1 free attack as well. Putting at us at 21 arrows or 21 fuses. Now, some people will calculate with 6 free fuses because... You know, technically that happens the first time, but I like to always like anticipate that the fight isn't going perfectly. So uh, six free is, is a crazy copium. That is uh, insane. You're way better um, estimating that only one attack is going in for free before the timer starts. Um, and that way you're pretty much always going to have the actual damage that you want. Now in the end game tree with ashes and stuff, we have 25 fuses we need to hit and... Um, then you can see that we've done a lot more to compensate. And yeah, uh, until POB updates, the quality on Ashes will make it look like you have crazy skill effect duration. You don't. But a thing that you can do if you aren't like very high on attack speed, etc. Getting the damage or time mastery with skill effect duration. This is really nice because yeah, it'll make you map slower. But it'll give you a little bit extra time to build up your fuses. Giving you a large amount of more DPS. So that is pretty much the final thing to explain for this build. And I hope it was all quite clear. So I hope you guys enjoy the build that me and Sai have been doing for you guys. This has been one of the things I've played the most. I'm actually not league starting that this time just because people are starting to yell at me for only playing explosive arrow. I think I do have like five, six explosive arrows at level 100 now. Um, but yeah, it's a great build. I really love it and I love seeing the feedback on this build every league. So many people are saying that it makes them have an amazing league start. And it is so good to like really build up currency and try different builds. It is important to remember there will be so many cool new things to try this league as well. So having something to give you early currency is very important. Either way, I hope this makes you have a great league start. Thank you for watching. Sub if you like the video. But more importantly, try to die less than I do.